Good evening, family. This is Frank. I'm just outside enjoying the calm and peaceful, cool breeze. It's been very hot here in Concord over the past couple uh, weeks, and we had a big thunderstorm roll through, and uh, it brought with it some cooler temperature. It's nice and cool. Me and my our dog Iris are out here chilling and relaxing and I just I wasn't gonna I didn't plan on doing a video tonight but I read a proverb or today's scripture lesson on Bible.com and it really spoke to some things that have been on my heart it's uh, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 to for us to guard our hearts to guard our hearts for out of it flows the issues of life and a dear friend of mine sister Gail and I were chatting on Facebook earlier and we were talking about how heavy our hearts have been how heavy our hearts have been for not only what's going on in the nation with COVID and you know all the protests that are going on and on both sides people being cut down and hurt and arrested and victimized and just it's, it was just terrible and then the, on a personal notes stress I've been burdened by some issues going on within some churches that I was affiliated with and politics. I love church. I love church. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I love fellowship and I love Sunday getting up and going to church. I love throughout the week services and I love prayer walks and going out there in the community and worshiping and, and being active. And I believe the word of God is quick and it's powerful and it's sharper and any two-edged sword and there's so much power and grace and mercy it's so awesome to get out there and be a part of fellowship be a part of family well I hate this having said that I hate church politics I hate it I hate the business side of it I hate when business decisions have to be made or when it becomes so professional these behind closed door meetings and limitations to put on this or that and it just so frustrates me sometimes when people are alienated or made to feel less than and I know that the leadership in churches they don't set out to do that they don't set out to alienate anyone or hurt them but they, they really just want to do the work of the Lord but it's just kind of like an end result it kind of happens sometimes the enemy gets a foothold in and next thing you know there's all type of chaos anyway we have that and then family members I have have been sick and we're worried about the COVID we're worried about certain things so I'm saying all this to say that there's issues that are flowing from my heart. There are things that are I'm burdened with. Yesterday, a young woman and, oh God, a young police detective was, she's on my Facebook page. I shared it. She, she was gunned down in front of her home and She's so beautiful and she's so young and she has her whole life ahead of her. And she, her life is gone. So I'm saying I'm not glorifying the enemy. I'm not glorifying anything negative. I'm just saying part of my ministry, part of what the Lord has called me to do, I am an everyday person. There is nothing special about me. But I know how to fight my battles. And Proverbs 4 and 23 says, guard your heart. Because out of it flows 
the issues of life. We're going to have these burdens. We're going to have these pressures. We're going to have these things that overwhelm us. And thank God for the women and the men who took me under their wing when I first got saved. They taught me how to cry out to God. They taught me how to release when I feel so burdened, when I feel so pressured, when I feel so overwhelmed. And even my little brother Jordan and I will cry out to God in the middle of the night sometimes. My son, he tells me, he prays. When things get too much, he prays. And next thing you know, it's another day he made it. My, my niece, I've mentioned it before, I raised her and she would play worship music at night in the room and it would deal with her as she slept. These are little tricks of the trade, if you will, that I've learned, that we have learned as a family in God. We have learned to call on the Lord. We have learned to trust in the Lord. My wife used to sing a song that you know, oh God, how did it go? I've learned how to suffer. I've learned how to suffer. And through the suffering, through the suffering, through the heartache, you know, anybody can suffer, but I learned how to suffer. Anybody can feel depression and loneliness and the weight on the round of neck and not understand when you have weight around your neck when you feel that stress that pressure and it builds and it builds and it builds and it's so you can feel like you can't even breathe but I've learned how to be depressed I've learned how to be out of my mind sometimes I've learned how to cry I've learned it's a process and I've learned how to go through because I know that even though I'm going through, I'm not going through alone. I've learned how. I don't just stress out. I stress out on my knees. I don't just agonize in pain and frustration. I do it on my knees. And every day is not perfect. I go through every day. I go through. Sometimes, even now, I, I go through weakness, but I learn how to be weak because the Word of God is an answer in there that when I'm weak, He is strong. The Bible says that His strength is made perfect in my weaknesses. I can celebrate my weaknesses. I can celebrate my pain. I can celebrate my frustration. I can guard my heart. Because out of it flows the issues of life. And I learned that process. I learned it just a little bit at a time. I've learned it. I've learned it. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I've learned it. I'm not any type of person to look up to. I'm just trying to share a little bit of nugget. It's a little nugget of information that we don't have to go through this alone. That God puts us out here and he gives us good friends. <laughs> and he gives us church family that we can reach out to. Learn how to suffer. Learn how to endure. Learn how to bear your burdens. Learn how to be stressed. Learn how it's a process. Anybody can feel stress. Anybody can feel stress, but learn the process. Learn how to stress out victoriously. And how you do that by making it through. I said it before, the Lord doesn't deliver us in the midst or deliver us from our issues of life. He delivers us through our issues of life. Are you going to let that stress overpower you? Are you going to let those burdens 
that are wrapped around your neck? Are you going to let them overpower you? Are you going to give up? Or are you going to trust the Lord? Guard your heart. Don't let everybody get close to your heart that says they love you. Prove it. They can prove their love for you. Don't let everybody have access to your heart and your relationship. Don't let everybody have access to your home. Don't let everybody have access to your children because it's going to be so much more stressful if they cause havoc in your life. And now your heart is torn. And now your heart is ripped apart. And now you're agonizing and going through. And there's this and there's that. Guard your heart. Protect it. It's a commodity. My son was telling me about some issues on his job. And he prayed about it. Or he was going through so much stress. I was praying about it. And then today it worked out. But I told him when I used to work. I would have a saying, and I know a million people probably say it, that you protect your job, and your job will protect you. You take care of your job, and your job will take care of you. You treat it like a little baby. You go to work early. You do a great job, great customer service. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. You might get frustrated with the boss, man, but deal with it. And let tomorrow come, it's another day. And it worked out for him. It worked out for him. And that's the whole thing, family. Guard your heart. Preemptive strikes. You know the stress is going to come. Like I said, we're not delivered from our issues. We're not delivered from our burdens. We're not delivered from the cares of our heart. We're delivered through them. So there are certain things we can do preemptively. I wake up in the morning and sometimes I feel pressure right away. What do I do? I do my morning devotions every day, every day. I get in the Word every day. While I go to sleep at night, I'm playing stuff on YouTube that's edifying, music that's soft and it's hymns or or whatever, or scriptures being read, the Psalms being read, helping you to sleep at night. And that's ministering to me as I'm sleeping. Because I can do pre, I can learn how to sleep. Like I said, everybody can sleep and learn how to sleep so that you can wake up the next day victorious. I've learned how to go through. I've learned how to suffer. I love learn how to live holy. How? Because I give it all to God and I fall short all the time. But guess what? I get back up and I give it to God and I give it to God and I give it to God and I give it to God. No matter what happens in life, I give it right back to God. No matter how I feel, I give it right back to God. I've learned how to live holy. I learned how to suffer. There's a process. You don't just haphazardly suffer. You just don't go through life tripping and falling through situations. But you learn how to make it through those situations. You learn how to endure. You learn how. And I'm not going to, this wasn't meant to be a whole preaching type of thing. These are just things that have been weighing heavy on my heart. Like I said, I listed, listed them. And they weighed so heavy on me. But I give it to God, and I trust Him. I trust Him. Abdu Murray, Abdu Murray earlier said, Are you cynical or are you skeptical? You see, a skeptic doesn't always believe there's enough evidence for a thing. For example, Someone who kind of straddles the fence in the church. They might be skeptical. Maybe they don't know that God. Maybe they've been going to church in its cultural form. They've always gone to church. And they don't really know that God can deliver them and make a way and set the captives free. And they may not know that the salvation is really meant for them. 
they heard it all their life, but they never kind of really ex experienced it. So they're kind of skeptical. Where a cynic knows the truth. But because of pain, because of past hurt, because of issues or abuse or whatever reason, or just pigheadedness, no matter how much evidence they're they're given, no matter how much evidence they surround that surrounds them day and night, they refuse to believe. Even if they know it's daytime, they refuse to admit it. Bright as can be outside, but they refuse to believe it. They know the truth of, of God, but they're just so rebellious, they refuse to believe it. They know what God has done in the past and what he's capable of, but they refuse to look and see. And they're cynical, and they're jaded, and they're hurting. But you don't have to do that alone, family. We can choose to walk in faith. We can choose to. It's all right if you don't totally. Look. I haven't experienced all of God's promises. I haven't experienced everything that there is to learn. Everything that. But I trust God that it will happen. That if there's an issue that I. If there's a, a path that I'm supposed to take. And I haven't never took it before. I just know that God's going to carry me through it. I just know that no matter what happens, I'm going to find a way. I just know that no matter what happens, he's going to lead me and guide me. And Because that's what the Holy Ghost does. He leads us and he guides us in spirit and in truth. And he leads us on the path of righteousness. He brings us right back where we're supposed to be each and every time. And he's going to just continue to do it the rest of our lives. Is your heart heavy tonight? Guard your heart, family. Guard your heart. Don't let go. Guard that heart. Protect it like a jewel. Protect it. Don't let everyone have access. Trust the Lord, but everyone else. My former pastor used to say, the arm of flesh will fail you every time. The only one, he used to raise his hand and say, I'm going to fail you. I'm going to let you down. Husbands, know your wife will let you down. Wives, know your husband will let you down. But Jesus will never let you down. Because we, we don't mean to. But it's in our nature. It's in our nature, family. Guard your heart. Protect it. And then give it to the Lord. Give it to God. And He'll complete the task. I love you, family. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we make an attempt. We, put, we take one step closer to you, and we say we're going to guard our heart, but we know that you're the, really the one that's protecting us. So I ask you, Father, Lord God, rock us to sleep tonight. Keep us and guide us through our, our rest. And return us back tomorrow morning to our consciousness. We give you our night. We give you our rest. We give you tomorrow. We trust in you. And we believe in you. And we love you, Lord God. We thank you for that fourth division of Proverbs, Lord God. And we just ask you, Lord God, to help us with that overflow of pressure, overflow of stress, overflow of agony and pain. And, Lord God, you know the people that have contacted me today and asking for prayer. And that's another issue. I have all these prayer requests, Lord, that you, that people have given me, Lord God, and it's to me it's a list, but to them, Lord God, it's real and it's now and it's so urgent, and I can feel it. Lord God, deal with them in their hurt, deal with them in their pain, deal with them in their fear, deal with their children, deal with us, Lord God, bless our unbelief. Let us trust in you more every day. Oh, we love you, Lord God. Pray for those that mourn. Bless those that mourn, Lord Jesus. You know, protect your family and lost their patriarch, Lord God. 
Oh God, we're praying for our family today. We're praying for those who have lost so much. Another woman contacted me, Lord God, you know who she is. She said, another person, another young person, 31 years old, has passed away from the COVID. Be with that family today. Be with the family of that officer, that detective. That is no more. But right now she's resting. I received word. I believe she was saved. She's resting in you, Lord God. Save us from ourselves. Save us from our current situation. Save us from this lost world. Oh, we pray, Lord God. We're not praying a prayer of desperation. We're praying a prayer, Lord God, knowing that you, Lord God, are the lifter up of our heads. You're the restorer of our souls. You are our most very precious Father. And we love you and we bless your name. Mold us and shape us after thy will. While we are waiting, yielding, and still. Lord, we love you. And we give these burdens to you. We give these cares to you. Let us learn lessons. Everything we did wrong today, let us get it right tomorrow. Let us be on point. Love you, family, and God bless you. I thank you. Iris is... Iris is keeping guard, and, and, she, and she don't let nobody mess with me when I pray. The Holy Ghost protects me, and then I got my baby girl over here. She don't let nobody hurt me. So I love you. God bless, and have a blessed night.